Hello, this is uh, E.J. Daigle, uh, Dean of Robotics and Manufacturing at Dunwoody College Technology in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I um, had a few uh, students wondering if we could post a uh, couple of basic tutorials on the use of National Instruments Multisim. Uh, Multisim is a, uh, a circuit design suite. Uh, it's decided, uh, designed to allow you to simulate um, electronic electrical circuits um, using your computer. Um, design and build, test and prototype, all the way up to doing a uh, e export into uh, UltiBoard which would allow you to do a circuit board layout. So this is a really really advanced tool. I tell students that it's like having uh, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, or Pro Engineer, but as an electronics tool instead of a uh, mechanical design tool or something like that. So first thing I need to do is go into my programs here and find Multisim. Um, Multisim was purchased a few years ago by National Instruments, uh, who does uh, some great software such as LabVIEW and NIVision and, and all kinds of stuff like that. So if you have some of the uh, LabVIEW type uh, software packages on your computer, um, you'll, you may or may not also have the uh, Circuit Design Suite, uh, which includes Multisim and UltiBoard. UltiBoard being your PCB layout tool and Multisim being your design tool. So I'm going to launch Multisim. And on my computer, I have Multisim 11. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I've been using Multisim now for a, a good 10 or 12 years. And uh, even back when it was a, an electronics workbench product, it was an outstanding product, and it just continues to get better every every year. So um, as soon as you launch Multisim, you're going to see that it gives you kind of a, uh, a piece of grid paper here that you can, you can obviously move things up and down and around if you need to to see more or less of the screen. Um, this is your workbench. This is where you're going to design your circuit. Um, you've got some tools up here that you can use, uh, and, and I like using these tools. You get used to these pretty quick if you just start clicking on them and running through them. You can also get to placing components by go to Place Component, um, and that's a good way to do it. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen over here, these are all your meters. You've got a, a multimeter, a function generator, a watt meter, an oscilloscope, you know, all kinds of stuff over there available for your use. Um, so let's do a real, real simple um, simple series circuit. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place a source. Um, and I notice under my toolbox here I've got a source, basic, diodes, transistors, analog, TTL, all kinds of different devices. So I'm going to go to place source. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a DC power source. And I'll hit OK. And it's going to allow me to, it'll bring it up as kind of a ghost image. That ghost image, I can decide, okay, you know, I'm not going to place it instantly until I click again. Once I click again, it's going to place it. Now, it's going to leave the, uh, the select a DC power source open. So if I was placing multiples, I could just click OK, and it would place another 12-volt source if I wanted to. And I can change that voltage, but I just want the one source, so I'm going to hit Close. Um, if I double click on this, I can change this from 12 volts to 10 volts to 112 volts. I don't care. Um, for right now, I'm going to leave it alone. Um, if I wanted to not display some things, like if I wanted to change the uh, global settings here and, and maybe not show the reference designator, not show the value for whatever reason, I could change that. For right now, though, I'll just leave those global settings intact and hit OK. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to place three resistors. So let's go ahead and grab three resistors. So I'm going to go into the, uh, let me show you where I went again here. So I had the place source. Now I'm going to go into place basic. Um, that's where all your standard components reside. Your transformers, your relays, connectors, sockets, resistors, capacitors, inductors, so on and so forth. But I want a resistor. And I want a 1K ohm resistor. Now, you'll notice that there's several different varieties of 1K. You might say, wow, there's a 1K, there's a 1.0K, a 1.00K. Um, these sometimes will change by tolerance. They'll sometimes change by type. Um, so you can actually, if, if you're going to design the circuit in here for the sake of manufacturing a circuit board, it'd be very important to pay attention to the footprint and the manufacturer, uh, meaning that uh, is this a chip resistor, is it a is it surface mount component, is it a through-hole component, uh, what is the physical size of this resistor, what is the wattage of this resistor, what is the tolerance of this resistor, is it carbon film, is it ceramic, is it metal film, you'll see all the different things I can I can use here. But for today we're just going to show off a little bit of, of, uh, of the uniqueness of being able to simulate multi-SIM. So we're just going to leave all of our standard settings. We're not going to change anything. We'll just let this be a carbon film resistor. We'll hit OK. It's going to allow me to place it. Now remember, it's going to bring it up and say, hey, you just placed a 1K ohm. And it's going to assume maybe I want to place multiples of this. And I do in this case. So I'm going to hit OK again and place my second one. And then I'm going to hit OK again and I'm going to place my third one. And that's real easy to do. Now once I've placed three in a row, I want to get rid of that tool. So I just hit close and it's all done. Um, at this point, it's, it's important to mention, anytime I'm going to work with a circuit, 
uh, and I'm going to simulate that circuit. It's going to require me to have a ground. I think if I try simulating this right now, let's see what it says. Yeah, it's, if I turn on the little simulate button, it actually tells me uh, the circuit is not grounded. Simulation requires at least one ground. Well, not only is the circuit not grounded right now, it's not even hooked up, but, but it's always going to look for a ground. So it's important that you add a ground at this point. So you go back to your source. You're going to grab a DC ground, work with the DC voltage. Um, you could use an earth ground. Um, the, one of the reasons it requires a ground is if I were going to do layout uh, for circuit board manufacturing, uh, for electronics engineering type work, um, it would be important that we had a ground plane laid out on that circuit board. Um, so you can't just, you know, let everything float magically in the air and, and hope that everything works out good. So I grabbed that DC ground and I placed it. I can close out that tool. Um, and now you could start to wire up. You know, I could wire from here just by mousing over the bottom of the DC source. I can go down to here. And if I move this up a little bit, maybe I can move over to here. Um, but I can see if I'm if I'm going up to R2 now, I really don't want R2. Maybe I want R2 to be, you know, vertical instead of horizontal. So I'm going to hit escape to get rid of my wiring tool. It's gone. And let's make R2 be vertical instead of horizontal. Well, that's real easy to do. You just right click on R2 and you go to a uh, 90 degrees clockwise flip and it's going to flip at 90 degrees clockwise and that works out really really nice um, then you might also say well let's say and anytime you're doing something if you do something and you're all of a sudden like oh my god i got something going on i don't know what's going on just always hit that escape button i think nowadays we we tend to forget that there's an escape button on the keyboard um, but at this point i want to install an ammeter so let's move our one over I want to be able to look at the total current in the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a meter here. And again, I could go over here to my multimeters, but you also have these indicators here. So we're going to use both of them just to give you a feel for all the different components here. So here's an indicator. And I want, there's a horizontal, there's a vertical. You can see how they change. It tries to give you a little bit of an ANSI uh, preview over here on the right. So I'm going to do a horizontal ammeter. I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to hit close. Now, if my ammeter were in backwards, it would read negative amps. Um, so I could, if I needed to, I could flip it horizontally just by doing that. I'm going to flip it back, though. I'm going to leave the plus on the left-hand side, the little green plus, because I know that the positive side of my source is closest to the left-hand side of the ammeter. So at this point, I should be able to just wire this guy up. And I can move these resistors around as much as I want to. Another th thing, too, is if I decide I needed another resistor, I could always highlight that resistor, hit Control-C, then click away from it, and hit Control-V, and it'll place the next one. One of the interesting things is be careful, because if I was to do that a couple of times, now all of a sudden I've got R R2, 3, 4, 5, and if I delete R4, you'll notice R5 is going to be the next reference designator. So that may or may not be how you want it. So you just keep that in mind. Um, you may have to go back and renumber things if you delete one that's in the middle somewhere. Um, we can finish wiring this up. I just mouse over the top of the resistor and click, drag up, and click again. And then I'm going to mouse down here, click, click. And then I want to I want to use uh, my, my multimeter here to take a real quick voltage measurement too. I could also go into the, into the indicators here. They have a voltmeter in there. Um, that's where I got that ammeter from. But this time I want to use one of these guys over here. So just like every other Windows program, there's probably uh, 10,000 different ways to do everything. Um, but I want to go in and grab a multimeter. And you'll see it'll come in here. And again, it's it's not oriented real well for this measurement. Um, so I'm going to hit Escape, and what I'm going to do is right-click on it. And I'm going to go to a 90-degree clockwise flip. And then I'm going to go ahead and wire this guy up. I just want to measure the voltage across R2. Now you'll notice when I wired that, that multimeter up, one of the things that you'll notice is that these lines kind of went over my, my, uh, my text for R2. Well, if you click on that line, you can always drag it like that and now it's not over the top R2. Another thing that you can do, I'm going to delete that one for a second just to show you another way, is you can click and then you can set a corner by clicking again and then coming down. So that, that's another way that you can prevent your lines from getting cluttered and looking like a bowl full of spaghetti. Um, but at this point, we should be able to simulate the circuit. So one of the things I'd like to do here is I'd like to open up my multimeter so I can read volts. There's my DC voltage. You notice my multimeter, just like having a, a fluke multimeter, I have to tell if I'm going to read amps, voltage, ohms, decibels, AC, or DC. In this case, I know it's DC volts, so I'm good. And then you're going to go up to your simulate button. This is the toggle simulation switch. 
Um, so basically when I hit this, I'm going to run the circuit. And I'm going to see that right now I have 12 volts is giving me 4 milliamps of current. And guess what? Each one of these resistors is going to have the same voltage drop because of the fact that I have, uh, obviously because I have uh, similar resistor sizes, um, they're each going to take up a third of the voltage. Uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that I have to consume all 12 volts as I go around the circuit. So a third of it's going to go here. That's 4 volts. A third of it's going to go here. I'm measuring that one. It's 4 volts. And a third of it's going to go here, which is 4 volts. And then also we should note that uh, Ohm's law says that 12 volts divided by the total resistance, so that's 12 divided by 3,000 ohms, should give me 4 milliamps of current. That's exactly what you're seeing right there. So this has just been a real quick uh, example of how to use multi-SIM, a very, very basic series circuit. I plan to do a few more of these and, and get you guys up to speed on some more advanced circuits. Um, remember to turn your simulation off. Your values will still stay there after you turn it off, um, but you can play around with this. You can do, uh, a lot of times my students uh, will, will uh, will accuse them of doing what we call dry labbing a, uh, a lab instead of uh, instead of actually hooking it up and running the real numbers here um, they'll they'll just do it multi-sim that's not our goal obviously um, but we really want them to do it multi-sim do it on the breadboard um, uh, take the multi-sim drawing and actually export it to UltiBoard and do footprint layouts of all the components on the circuit board and that is truly what we're talking about when we talk about electronics engineering technology thank you again